So you can make ethers. Um, you can make them through an SN2 pathway. It's a Williamson ether synthesis, synthesis. You can do them through an SN1 pathway where you form a carbocation and attack it with an alcohol. And, and both those are totally valid. Turns out you can also break CO bonds in ethers. Ethers are actually pretty inert functional groups, but under acidic conditions, you can cleave an ether. So ether cleavage is what we're going to talk about. And I'm going to draw, um, I'm going to have three rows here. And I'm going to choose these phenyl substituted ethers to make my point because uh, the phenyl group will not react. We'll only look at the alkyl group on the oxygen. So that's one row. I'm going to put both the methyl and ethyl in there. This one and the bottom one is going to be t-butyl. And all we're really doing is changing the degree of substitution on the carbon attach attached to the oxygen. So what happens in these? That's supposed to say mechanism. Um, we're going to treat these with strong acids. And so what acids are we going to use? I'm going to put these on the right. To cleave these top two compounds, we need an acid that has a nucleophilic counter ion. And that's going to be HBr or HI. So what happens is we're going to treat this with something like HBr. This oxygen will become protonated. And here's our nucleophilic counter ion that we needed. And now this is one big leaving group. And the bromide can come in there and push that leaving group right off. And now we've broken our CO bond. We've made an alcohol and a halide. Turns out that works as shown if you use HBr or HI because Br- is pretty nucleophilic as a counter ion and so is I-. minus. Now let's go to the bottom and let's talk about the same kind of thing. Now we're going to treat with an acid and as it turns out we can use any acid. We can use HCl, we can use sulfuric acid, we can use HBr, we can use HI. All we need is some kind of really strong acid. So let's say we use HCl. Start the same. We protonate the oxygen. And now the difference is that this big leaving group is attached to a tertiary carbon. And this leaving group can actually just leave because it's going to form a tertiary carbocation. We couldn't do that up top because that would make a primary carbocation. That's just not going to happen. But if, if you have enough substitution around your carbon in your ether, you can form a carbocation. And then this carbocation is going to do different things. It might do an SN1. Maybe chloride would attack that. Maybe if there's no nucleophile around at all, which would be in the case of sulfuric acid, maybe it'll do an E1. But the whole point is that bond is broken. That CO bond is broken, and we've cleaved our ether. Now, how about this middle case? It's not as unhindered as a primary alkyl group and not as hindered and good at making a carbocation as a tertiary. Turns out you can use just about any condition for this type of substitution where you have a, a secondary carbon there. Um, it, it, it just might react a little more slowly or require a little bit heat to go, but, but it, you can go by either pathway for the middle case. So it is possible to uh, break apart ethers. They happen under strongly acidic conditions, and which acid you use depends on the degree of substitution around the carbon that you're trying to break off of your oxygen.